Four horror stories animated. And I'm pretty scared. I'm easily scared as hell. And uh, yeah. I hope there's no jump scares in here because uh, I hate jump scares. I hate haunted houses. But I love watching conspiracy videos, true crime. I love reading or watching those. But, yeah. If I sound a bit weird, it's because. Allergies. I just fed the pups a while ago, so I'm, a, I'm feeling a little bit stuffy. Oh, yeah. Let's just do this, you know. It's poopy. Let's go. Which? This happened when I was a kid. I was in the fifth grade, and my friend, uh, let's call him Ethan, invited me over okay, to his place. Ethan. He lived right by the ocean, and if you walked through the forest for half a mile, you'd reach a nice beach with a diving board. When I got to his house, we hung out, played video games, and talked. You know, typical kid stuff. Then we decided to go to the beach. It wasn't too far away, and we knew we could get back in time for dinner, so we set off. To make the trip more adventurous, we decided to bushwhack our own path. After walking a couple of minutes, we hit a tall fence. Crap, Ethan exclaimed. Well, I guess we'll have to go back. Suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, I spotted something. The fence went about eight meters long and then stopped. My jaw dropped. There was a house. It was an old cabin with boarded up windows. The planks were falling off and you could see the old insulation underneath. What? It was oh gray God, in color like and had flecks of blue paint. Watching me. The fence led up to the side of the house, stopped and then continued on the other side. What scared me the most was that there was no road. I mean, not even a clearing to get to the road. You'd have to walk 20 minutes. It Gavin, come on, high. Ethan yelled from behind me. Look at this, I shouted back. Ethan walked up to me and his jaw dropped. There was no come door, on. just a frame. And peering through the frame, we could see that there was a back door, also with no frame. All we had to do was walk through the house, then we could get to the beach. I looked at Ethan. Should we do it? I asked him. No, he shrugged. I don't see why not, he responded. Inside the house was dark, despite the sunlight pouring in through the door. We advanced slowly through the house, and <sighs> Ethan pointed to the door. As we reached the door, I peered up the stairs. I grabbed mm. Ethan and shoved him out the door. What was it, he said, as soon as we got away. My whole body shook. What? I must be going mad, I thought to myself. Eventually, I explained it to him. As we reached the door, I wanted to take one last look no, at the house. No, don't do that. I glanced up the stairs and I saw the shadowy outline of a person. All I could see were eyes staring back at me and a crooked grin. Ethan and I took another oh route God. back home and we told Ethan's mom. She laughed at us and said she'd been that way many times and there was no house. We were angry because she didn't believe us. So we got out our cameras and no, went back the next day. No. When we got there, there was no house. It was just gone. No clearing, nothing. To this day, Ethan and I still wonder what it was. Was that man just a homeless person? Or maybe he was something much, much worse. I suggested to Ethan a theory that scares me to this day. I had been reading about Russian folklore, and a page caught my attention. 
It was a story about a witch named Baba Yaga who had a moving house. She would eat naughty children, and parents used to use it to scare children. Was this a witch? I guess Probably. we'll never know for sure. What's that? It's like crooked house, the cemetery. I was in my early teenage years during this time. My family and I went on vacation in a village which had a forest rumored to be haunted. There was a cemetery in the forest. It was a little far away from the village, near a lake. We weren't actually supposed to go to that forest, but my cousins thought it would be fun to play hide and seek at night. We were given some rules. We weren't allowed to take our phones or flashlights with us. Oh no. As planned, oh, we all no. met in front of our farmhouse at midnight. Me and my younger sister, who was seven years old at that time, were the youngest out of everyone. So my older cousin decided to help us hide. He was 22 at that time, and he wanted Why to make sure we didn't get lost. I didn't see at 22. After we chose who was going to be the seeker, we parted ways, trying to find the best hiding spot. My older cousin just wanted to win, so he took us to the cemetery. He said, she'll obviously be too afraid to enter the cemetery. I think this will be a best hiding spot for us. Although my younger sister kept telling us not to go there, we shut her off, telling her she was just a kid and would make us get caught. Oh, to this no. day, we wish we would have listened to her. Why? It was getting darker. It was almost 2 a.m. Then all of a sudden, the cemetery lights went out. My sister's hand tightened around my hand. My cousin was obviously scared too. We could only hear the sound of wind and stray dogs barking at the backside of the cemetery. But then, we heard digging noises. I still remember that horrifying sound. At a distance, we could see an old man with ruffled hair and dirty clothes, digging a grave with his bare hands. He was making hissing noises while he dug. All of us stood there, frozen. We didn't know if we should scream or run away. My cousin held our hands and started to slowly lead us to the entrance, trying not to make any noise. Oh, no. He whispered, we have to get out of here. My sister was almost on the verge of crying. Do not make but a noise, to ruin girl. everything, I stepped on a broken branch. Of course you noise. did. Of course you a did. A stranger shot up his head toward our direction and his lips curved in a creepy smile. Oh my god. Run, my cousin yelled, quickly picking up my sister and running away as I followed closely behind them. Oh my Thankfully, god. Thankfully the man was weak and couldn't run any faster. <laughs> he stopped at the middle of the cemetery staring at us with his hazel eyes. Holy shit. A few days later we found out that the man had been caught by the police. He was a criminal who dug up dead bodies, stored drugs in them, and sent them off to other nations to sell drugs. He was caught once, but successfully escaped. If he wasn't so old and weak, I'm afraid that we might have ended up being a couple of dead bodies too. <gasps> oh my god, that's true. A few months ago, something strange happened to me. To this day, I can't explain exactly what happened. <clears throat> I was relaxing at my house, doing some schoolwork on my laptop. Being home alone never bothered me until then. After about two hours of being alone, I decided to go get some ice cream for oh, my I want some ice cream. Too. As I headed back with ice cream to my room, I heard someone bang on the front door. I never answer the doors. And I always make sure they're locked when my parents leave. I decided it was the mailman, and that he would set the package down and leave. Then I heard the bang again, but louder. I was confused, so I went to my dad's office, since it had a window facing the front porch. The second I grabbed the door handle of his office, my parents' bedroom door slammed shut right next to me. I screamed. Our air conditioning was broken at the time, so there was no way it could have been the air. I looked at the door, ran to the other side of the house, and called my mom to see if she was expecting anyone over. No, Alyssa, she said. And those two words made my heart beat faster than it ever has. My phone disconnected, and I started hearing footsteps of coming towards me from down the hallway. What? I ran and hid behind a door in our living room. I knew I'd be out of sight, 
since I used to hide there as a child. I called my close friend Emily, who always knew how to calm me down in crazy situations. She told me to go and lock myself in my room. As she was talking, I started to hear doors open and slam shut along with footsteps, and the voice of a little girl saying, I'm going to find you, over and over. I started crying, and when the noise stopped, I ran to my bedroom door. When I grabbed the handle and was about to go in, I heard it again. The little girl was in my room and said, Come here, Alyssa. I want to play. Come here. I ran to the guest bathroom and locked myself in. I started to hear knocking on the bathroom door and the voice, Don't you want to play, Alyssa? No. We could have a lot of fun. I started screaming back, Hell no, just leave me alone. She started laughing. The knocking and laughter grew louder and louder. And then it started sounding like she, that thing, started to walk away, still laughing and knocking. Then I couldn't hear it anymore. My grandpa came into the house yelling, Alyssa, it's grandpa. You can come out, you're safe. I ran as fast as I could to my grandpa. Later on, I found out that after my phone cut out on my mom, she sent my grandpa to check on me. Once I told my grandpa that a little girl had gotten into the house, we went around the house searching for her, but we never found anything. All the windows and the doors were locked, the garage was closed up tight, and nothing was broken into. I hate being home alone now, and being in my room, but I've learned to deal. Oh, Jimmy, just stay here, please. Oh my god. When I was about nine years old, that was I was in my swimsuit, ready to go to swimming lessons. My brother and I had made a pillow fort, and it was still there from the night before. It's hot. I had crawled underneath the coffee table, where a blanket went over it, blocking out the outside world. I have no idea why I stuck my foot outside of the blanket, but I did. A dark black sock crawled creepily oh. towards my foot and slowly slid over it. The sock was cold and I felt odd. No. I recognized the sock. Not the feet. It looked just like the one my mom had. I called out my mom's name and my brother's name, but there was no response, only silence. I walked to the window, but when I looked out, there was nothing out of the ordinary. I saw my cat staring at me with a weird look on her face. Then, Why is it smiling? I was horrified when I heard the shower running upstairs. My mom was still in the shower, and my dad was at work. I ran up the stairs to find my brother spinning on the chair in my parents' room. I asked him if he went downstairs, and he told me he had nothing to do with the situation. Why is it looking like I told that? my mom what had happened, but she didn't believe me. She said that I was probably hallucinating and that it was just the cat. But I know what I saw, and the look on my cat's face is still fresh in my memory. If 
I can have this, this tonight Promise that you won't forget me Listen to it Yeah, thank you for watching this video Hope you enjoyed it Like if you want to Subscribe if you want to And comment down below what content I should do Or videos that I should react to next Bye. Spooky season. Ooh. <laughs>